Hello and welcome back to part 2 of creating a jQuery slider. In today's lesson we're going to be going over the automatic looping for your images. Now in the last lesson we left off with just a basic HTML structure. If you can't remember what that looks like, it, this is the code here. And then if we go over to Google Chrome, you can see that this is what it displayed online. Now today we're going to be going over how to make it run through all of the um, images just like this is going to be doing now. It's going to go through three and then to four and so on and so on. Alright, so the first thing we need to do before anything else is we need to go and get jQuery. Now how we get jQuery is there's loads of different methods. One of the first methods is if you just go to jQuery.com you can see that they have a large download button on their page right here. Now, you guessed it, you click that to download it, but it's not as simple as that. They give you options such as a compressed version and an uncompressed version. Now, if you're not going to be editing and going into the jQuery and changing how functions work, etc., then I'd highly recommend the compressed version. Now, what you can do is if you click on this, it will display a huge page of code and it'll go on for ages. Now you don't have to read this code, what you need to do, you can either copy and paste this link and paste that into your script source or you can copy all of this code and save it onto a file and then you can have that file locally and you can run it. Or there's other methods like including from the Google, um, sorry, the Google like API for jQuery, they have that too. But today I'm just going to be copying and I'm going to be creating a file new JS standing for JavaScript and I'm just going to paste it in here and I don't have to worry about anything else. I just file save as and I'm going to save it into our slider into the JS folder and I'm just going to call it jQuery.js like so. All right, so once that's been saved, we can now load in jQuery into the document. And I always do it at the bottom of the document. That way it loads in the HTML before the jQuery so that if the jQuery is taking a long time to load, the HTML is still displayed to the user. But some people do it in the head, it will work either way. All right, so we're going to open the script tag and close the script tag. And then we're just going to type in SRC, standing for source to link it to a source. So I'm going to go into our JS folder and I'm just going to link it to jQuery.js and that will include jQuery onto our page. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this line and I'm going to change jQuery to slider.js. Now let's make that slider.js file. So file, new, JavaScript and file, save as slider. JS. All right, so now we have the main slider.js ready. We can start working with some default variables which we're going to need for this slider. Now, the first variable is I called it slider int. And what this is going to be is it's going to be the default of which one we're starting with. So we're going to start with number one. So we just close it off like so. Now the next one is going to be slider next. Now this is going to be the default next image. So the next image, sorry, it's the next image that is going to be coming into the slider. So obviously it's going to be number two. Now you might think that's quite obvious, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to open the dollar symbol, open and close brackets and type in document. Then we're going to do period ready, open and close brackets, and then inside them brackets, we write function, open and close brackets again, open curly brace, go down three lines, close the curly brace, close the bracket, close it all off of a semicolon. Now what this line does is when your document, so when your website is ready, it's gonna run a function within these curly braces. Now, what we want to do at the moment is we want to just load in the slider image. So we're going to go and select the ID of slider. 
we're going to go within that and we're going to select the image and we're going to have the ID of one. Now you're thinking, where did you get that ID of one from? But I'll go over that in a second. So we're going to do dot fade in and 300. All right, so now we've got that. If we go into index, we then need to give the ID equals to one and ID is equal to two and ID is equal to three and so on and so on for all of your slider images. All right, so once we have the ID of one, two and three and four or however many images on your page and when jQuery loads, it's going to fade that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Chrome, go back to this and we're going to refresh and you can see that number one was faded in. So now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to then run a function and we're just going to call this function start slider like so. All right, so now that we're running a function once the document is ready, what we're going to do is we're going to have to write out the function and then the function name. So start slider, open curly brace and close the curly brace a few lines down. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to count how many images are within this slider so that we know when we get to the start and we know when we get to the end. So I'm going to create a new variable called count and it's going to be equal to dollar symbol, open close brackets, two double quotation marks, the ID of slider, and we're going to select all images inside that. And we're just going to do dot size, which is a jQuery function, which will count all of them elements. All right, so once we got that, we then need to classify the or declare the loop variable. So we type in loop and it's just going to be to equal to set interval and make sure that interval is spelt with a capital I. Now you can see that it gives us an option of expression and timeout in milliseconds. Now, what this means is that the expression, we're going to have a function just like so. And then the milliseconds is how many milliseconds you want the function to loop. So after every three seconds, after every two seconds, so on and so on. So we write 3000 for three seconds. All right, once we've got this, we then need to fade out all of the images. And I'll make that more clear in a little bit later on. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to select the slider and we're going to select the images within inside that. And we're just going to do dot fade out 300, like so. So that's going to fade out all of the images. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do slider and then image with the ID. And then we're going to close it off and we're going to concatenate using the plus symbol I'm going to do slider next. So it's using that slider next here to choose the next image that we're going to fade in. So it's going to do slider image with the ID of slider next. And then we just do dot fade in. And we make that 300 as well. All right, so once we've done that, we then need to make the slider int equal to the slider next and that's because the slide that we're currently on now is going to be slider next so we just need to update this so that slider int is equal to two for example and then we need to update the next one on the list so slider next is going to equal to slider next again plus one so we're going to do two plus one, which is three, and then the next one will be four, and the next one will be five, and so on and so on and so on. So we're just going to save that, and we're going to see what that gives us. So now if we refresh our document, it's going to start with one, and then it's going to fade out and fade in with two, and fade out and fade in with three, and so on and so on. Okay, so once we've done that, you can see that once it goes, sorry, once it goes past four, it won't display anymore. And that's because that it's going to five, then six, and seven. We're not doing any validation to checking if we've got to the end. So what we're doing is we're going to do if 
the the variable of slider next is greater than the count. So if there's if the next one on the list is greater than the amount of images we have, then we're going to open curly brace and we're just going to make the slider next equal to one. So we're starting from the beginning again. And then we're going to do the slider integer is equal to one as well. So once we got that, we're going to refresh. And then you see that it'll go to two. And then after three seconds, it'll go to three. Then after three seconds again, it'll go to four. But then after four, it's going to start back at one again, which is perfect. It, we've got the functionality of it looping through all of our images. So now that we've done this, in the next lesson, we're going to be going over the next and previous buttons and how to skip slider images. Okay, so thank you for watching this tutorial. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.